I'm Paul Peck here at Peden Stadium in Athens, Ohio, joined by Bulls radio color analyst Jim Kubiak for the second straight week. Jim, a lot of things went well for the Bulls, but just not enough to get a victory, seven-point loss. But the Bulls players were obviously, as you might expect, focusing on the positives in this game. I was really impressed with the physical play of Buffalo, both on the front line of the offense and the defense. Uh, this was a very physical football game. These guys were dialed in and ready to play, and they pushed Ohio around. Right. Well, let's hear what the Bulls players and head coach Jeff Quinn had to say following the seven-point loss to the undefeated Ohio Bobcats. But I really feel like our kids have, uh, have, have uh, been through a lot, and, uh, you know, they're going to continue learning. They're going to continue. We're going to coach them hard, and we're going to continue doing what we can to help them win. Blankenship has not busted anything loose yet. He will get a chance now. He runs up the middle. He's chased by the Bulls and hauled down from behind by Willie Mosley. Good pursuit by the Bulls, but the pursuit only worked because Blankenship could not find a hole to run through. Well, we knew the running back had a big game last week versus UMass, and Coach Tepper did a great job of game planning, and we just executed it to the best of our abilities. And we did a good job in the first half, but I feel like we had a great uh, game plan, and we took advantage of them. When you have opportunities, uh, put your offense out there, defense and special teams. You know, we talked about all three phases today, and you know, we had an early turnover. It was a great play by Nyjah Johnson uh, to get the turnover. Shotgun snap, Tettleton fakes the handoff, stands in the pocket, going to throw a deep ball down the middle of the field, and it is intercepted. Nyjah Johnson reading that one all the way. It's just a frustrating thing. Everyone played so well. The O-line. Might have played their best game of the year. Devin had, what, 160 yards as a freshman. That's a lot, you know, because he wasn't seeing that many carries in the beginning of the season. And that means a lot to us to know that we have that much depth at running back with Brandon not playing and then him stepping in and doing good things like that. We're really excited. At first, it was a little weird, cause, and I was a little nervous because, you know, it's my first, first career start. But, I mean, once I got comfortable after the first drive, you know, I just went in and did what I was supposed to do, and I was playing running back. Three wide receivers to the left, Alex Newt to the right, shotgun for Zordich. He gets the snap, draw play, hand off to Campbell at the 25, at the 20, at the 15, and Devin Campbell goes down to the 12-yard line, and that's exactly what you wanted to do. And here comes Patrick Clark onto the field to try to tie this game up. It gives me a lot of confidence. Uh, I'm pretty sure it gives the coaches a lot more confidence to know that, you know, whenever Bo's not in, I can go in, or me and Miri can go in, because now we have three dangerous people in the backfield, not one. Zordich back in the game again for the second straight play. Going to throw deep down the sidelines, and it's caught. Cordero Dixon with a catch to the three-yard line. Nice grab, nice throw, first and goal for the Bulls. You just focus on the things that you did right, because we did a lot of good things, you know. And then the bad things will make their way to the side. We won't have those issues anymore. We'll take care of them. We know that they're there, but I think the way to stay positive throughout the season is to know that we did so many good things. We can keep moving forward with those good things that we did. But we also got to learn from our mistakes so they don't happen again. You know, we got Northern Illinois next week, another good football team. We can't beat ourselves. We can't shoot ourselves in the foot, give up so many turnovers and big plays on special teams. And now I feel like we have a great football team. Joined again by Bulls radio color analyst Jim Kubiak. Let's start by talking about the running game. Uh, this was a Mid-American Conference leading team in Ohio University, giving up less than 100 yards rushing on the game. The Bulls wind up with 313. How did they do that? You know, it was a remarkable performance physically by Buffalo. Those five offensive linemen, led by Trevor Sales, really took over this football game, and Buffalo pounded the ball with Devin Campbell and Alex Zordich, and they just continued to push him around, and there was no answer for Ohio. They just couldn't hold their ground. No Brandon Oliver, no James Potts, no Anthony Taylor, no Brandon Murray, so the Bulls work their way down to their fifth string running back, and freshman Devin Campbell winds up churning out 160 yards. He was awfully fun to watch, wasn't he? And coming into this game, if he would have said he would have had 160 yard rushings, we would not have believed that, and he did a great job. Uh, he protected the football. He was up inside. He was outside, and for a true freshman, boy, he did a great job. Well, let's talk about the defense, and particularly in the running game again. This was a team in Bo Blankenship, who was third in the country in rushing, but he's held the 86 yards rushing, and for most of the game, the Bulls really frustrated Blankenship and Tyler Tettleton, the outstanding quarterback of the Bobcats. How did they do that? Well, they shut down the inside, and that's where Bo Blankenship does all of his work. And when you look at the film last week against University of Massachusetts, 
he tore him up with 269 yards and it was between the tackles and Buffalo did a great job between the tackles today. They really wadded things up and there was nowhere for him to run. Well, let's see. We had a fake punt run in this game. We had a double reverse to a backup tight end who threw a touchdown pass. We had that same backup tight end come in as a wildcat and score a touchdown. Um, I, you you kind of feel like somewhere along the line the Bulls are going to run out of trick plays, but maybe not. Well, they, they pulled everything out of their hat today and you know, they're so close, Paul, and this is a good football team. This is a team that's physical, that believes in itself, uh, that has done a lot of good things with, they have six or seven guys that are starters that are out and injured, and they're finding a way to stay in football games. And let's not forget that Ohio is 5-0, and and they're a good football team. They don't make many mistakes, and I think really if you look at this game, it was just a couple of self-inflicted wounds that were the difference. Well, the Bulls will accentuate a lot of those positives as they get ready for their next game. Another tough test against one of the best teams in the Mid-American Conference on the road against Northern Illinois. And then finally, the three-game road trip comes to an end, and the Bulls head back home where they'll host the University of Pittsburgh on October 20th.